Now, we began off this particular teaching with the Isaiah 64 and 6. Mm -hmm. Because first, we must dismiss this false idea of our righteousness. You understand? Our righteousness is apart from his righteousness or the black Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, and the revelation of Rastafari. So we mentioned that our righteousness is as a filthy garment, you understand, as a filthy rag. You understand, our righteousness apart from him is as a filthy rag. But a couple of interesting things that we were able to come across in this beginning exercise in our Torah studies. So let's clear, let's clear the whiteboard right here. You understand, let's clear the whiteboard. We'll keep that up there. And like filthy rags. Our righteousness is as good as a filthy dust rag to wipe off and to clean off. You understand? But not used as a, as a rag to wipe off and clean off, but we are thinking that our own personal righteousness. So we have to become very clear on this. You understand? When we become very clear on this, then we become very clear on this. Now, let's touch on something that we had um, touched on in this particular teaching. Now, we want to continue. We want to continue on the verse 11 of Isaiah 65. But let's backtrack off on something that we touched on briefly. We was touching on um, Isaiah um, 64 and 8. Let's put this up here under our Torah studies. Isaiah, you understand, 64 and 8. All right. Isaiah 64 and 8 says what? Isaiah 64 and 8 says that, but now, it's a prayer that's put in here, but now, Abir too, I father, his father, O father of the house, thou art our father, thou art our father. So we have father, let's put father. Now we was noting that his majesty is the father of modern Africa, but he is not the father of of postmodern Africa. This is very, very significant. We're living in the post now. Since after 74, 75, we entered into the so called Cold War. And in entering that Cold War, we entered into the postmodern times. You understand? It's very clear. In fact, when you hear people talk about postmodern, don't you ever ask yourself, well, when, at what time did it become, how does it become postmodern? Aren't we still in modern times? No, we're in postmodern times. Something significant happened. You know what I'm saying? And that significant point man and mark is the King of Kings. You know what I'm saying? And it is holy Ethiopia. Even the day September 11th is significant and has been more significant even before September 11th that we know of it in this present time because September 11th is Ethiopia's New Year's Day. You know what I'm saying? And September 11th, September 12th was when the creeping coup you know what I'm saying? The great transgression against the king of kings occurred. And it's very significant for us to put those two, make that connection there within the scripture and within reality. But here in Isaiah 64 and 8, it is saying to us, But now, Avertu, O Lord, thou art our father, Abatachin. Thou art our father. We are the what? Clay. Thou art our potter. And we all are the work of thy hands. Now, as we briefly mentioned in the last portion of this particular teaching, the hands, you know, the hands of his imperial majesty, the hands of him, or the hands of him. What about the hands of his imperial majesty? Now, symbolically speaking, the hands represent the attribute of God that's known as the tisaret. And we've touched on Tiferet briefly, but at a more Kabbalistic level, it will become even clearer, the Tiferet, with this particular, this particular symbol, or the hands, the hands of God. You understand? And this is the symbolic of the hands of God, as well as the Tiferet, which is an attribute. It's an attribute of God, as well as the name of the Son of Man, Ras. Teferi or Ras Tafari, Lij Tafari. Now, here in Isaiah 
64 and 8, it says that thou art our father. We are the clay, and thou art our potter. So let's equal here. We have potter. Now, Babylon still plays tricks because you probably know of potter in the sense of Harry Potter. But what you don't know is the etymology of Harry comes from Harry, Heru, right? Heru, which is like that, but also the Ethiopic, the Ethiopic uh, Herui, you understand, which will be more properly spelled in the sense of R U Y, but you might find it written as H. E R U Y, but that Y can be an I. So we have, in studying the etymology of Harry, Heru, Heru, Herui, 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 you understand? Which means elect. Now, all of this right here, in its Ethiopic sense, means the elect, or it means the chosen, and is another way of also referring to Christ in his kingly character or the Messiah. All right? Or the Messiah. So we wanted to put this etymology right here so you can understand the link with this Harry. Now, in Isaiah 64 and 8, it says that thou art our father. You understand? Now, the Schofield study and the reference Bible, let's bring this forward right here. The Schofield, here's where we are right, in the school field, in the study, or the reference Bible, right? And then it has a footnote right here. You see the footnote? You see the footnote right down here, right? You can see the footnote right here. And we're going to read a little bit of this footnote, right, in order to put it into better context. And the footnote has the number two right here. And the number two now is saying here the reference is to the relationship through creation rather than through faith. You understand? Through creation. You understand? Rather than through faith. So His Majesty is the father of modern Africa in the sense of the creation of modern Africa. You understand? Not saying that all the Africans or even the Ethiopians recognize him through faith. So this is an important distinction that even in our study of the Schofield um, Reference Bible, the footnotes, you understand, give us an important indication, an important key. It mentions Acts of the Apostles um, 17, verses 28 and 29, and then it says there's a note there. But there's a reference before that, which we touched on briefly in the last teaching, and it mentions Isaiah 1 and 2. It mentions as well Isaiah 64 and 8. So let's go to Isaiah 1 and 2. Let's go to the beginning of the book. Let's go to Isaiah 1 and 2. And in Isaiah 1 and 2, it says, Hear, hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord, yod he wow he yod he vav he o wow he hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. This is an ideal epitaph, you understand, to the careless generation of Ethiopians, or the careless Ethiopians, you understand, in 1974 and 75, and it's Kazare de res, until the present time as well. They have rebelled. In verse 3 it says, The ox knoweth his own and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. That the people of Yahweh, the people of Jah, at home and abroad, have not considered as a collective, but there has been a remnant. And this remnant in the present time we know as Rastafari. You understand? There's a remnant that recognizes this truth. There's a remnant of these Ethiopian Hebrews. Now, the scripture says here in Isaiah 64, Isaiah 64 and 8, that he is our father. And it says that he is our potter. Now, potter is also significant. You understand? Potter, is, he, he is our potter. We are the clay, and thou art our potter. 
and we all are the what? The work of thine hands. You understand? Know the work of thine hands. And this significantly is the Tiferet attribute, Kabbalistically speaking, of God. So this is also a sign, you'll know, say, of the King of Kings, a very important sign. Now, one thing people may say, oh, it's Masonic, so from so on. How many times, and go through all the picture history, before Haile Selassie, before His Majesty, and show us how many of these so-called Masons, you understand, know were doing this particular sign in the same way that Haile Selassie was doing before, in the B.C., before Christ in his kingly character. See, now we see people on TV, the weatherman and other folks, doing this particular sign in this present time because it has been revealed, but it has also been co-opted, you know, since for other usages. But that right there is a little deeper as we go Kabbalistically speaking and speaking of the, the attributes of God. Here we want to keep it on the Cherui and the Pater. Who is the Pater? The Father is the Pater, right? But then when we go to the Ethiopic, and Egypt, we have Pata. When we go Ethiopically, we have the the Fitte. You understand? And this Fitte is the Fitta, right? Which means, by translation, which means justice, and often is also associated with this, which is the Siddic. You understand? Or what ones will call the Sedek, you understand? Which is righteousness. So we have this particular etymological link that we need to make very clear. So in the word Pata, you understand? In the ancient, we have the Pitta. You understand? Ethiopically speaking, we have the Fitta. You understand? The Fitta, as in the Fitta Neges. You understand? Which means the law or the justice of kings. Notice, the translation of this is often the law, you understand? And let us put this right here, that is the law. Now, law, as we know, is connected with Torah, or the Orit, the Orit. So we have law connected with Fitta. Now, father, what's interesting in the etymology of father, if you look at Pitta, you understand, by a trans uh, permutation of letters, Pitta, you understand, will also be the Pidda, Pada, Fada, the Fada, the Pidda. So you can see how Father, Pitta, through the T, the T, the P, the P, and the F often interchanges. And we, show, we showed that also in the Pa'ar, where we're touching on the uh, Tefora, you understand, and from the root Pa'ar or the fa'ar, and how the fa'ar, the pa'ar, also link with the English fear. You understand? Fear in its higher sense. You understand? In its divine or godly sense. You understand? In the Hebrew. Now, he is the father. He is the pater. You understand? He is the pitta. He is not Harry pater, but he is the cherui, the cherui, who is the pitta. The, the pata or the siti. And it's important to understand even in ancient Egypt and the ancient Kamites who pata, the true pata really was. It's with pata that the establishment in ancient Egypt of fatherhood was established.